Good morning and welcome to On Being Enough show. And today I'm going to share with you a short story and a few ways that not feeling enough shows up in our daily life and business. So a while back, I had met this woman and she would say things to me like, here you go, gorgeous. And I didn't really understand why she was calling me gorgeous. And I asked her, why do you call me gorgeous? And she said, because you are. And I just think it's a nice thing to do. Okay. So I started to think about that. And that was the end of that conversation for a while. And then I was um, years later on a phone with a client and as she's hanging up the phone, she says, thank you so much, Rosie. And I hope you have someone in your life that tells you how gorgeous you are every day. And I got the phone and I was, you know, single at the time. And um, I was like, wow, but I really don't have someone telling me that. And I decided that I was going to start to address other people, call other people gorgeous, give them that compliment. And I made it part of my business. So this, hello, gorgeous. I would address all my emails like that. I would address my phone conversations like that. And I would make sure in a conversation that I would call other women gorgeous. And what happened was pretty miraculous because as I started to do that, I noticed that more and more people were saying it to me. And it became this like boomerang effect. The more I gave it, the more... It was said to me, and it was by random people and almost everybody that I met. So that was just a beautiful testament to the way that we can give away the thing that we think we are lacking. And so that's my invitation to you is to think about that thing that you are lacking and think about how you can gift that away. So I want to show you... Um, six ways that that not enough feeling can show up in your life when you really don't realize that's what's going on. They're sneaky. And I'm going to share my screen and show you. So number one, procrastination. So you might go around saying, oh, I'm procrastinating this idea. You notice yourself procrastinating. But that really has to do with you not feeling good enough to really complete it. There's something scary about taking the project or whatever the thing is that you're working on or doing. It's that like, maybe it's not going to be good enough, or maybe I'm not good enough to do it, or maybe I don't know enough to do it. So that's a really interesting one. And this other one is a pretty pesky one is perfectionism. Because when you're do working on a project and you find yourself keep on working on it and keep on, you know, rewriting and redoing and read this and read that and never getting it done. And then you say, oh, well, because I want it to be perfect. And what does that even mean? So I notice this a lot in my card deck creation programs where people will be going on and on and on and never get to the finish line because they're like, well, I'm a perfectionist. And while of course you love things to be perfect, there's never such a thing. So there's a point at which it is perfect as is, but that feeling of, well, what if it's not good enough? And that scariness of, if I put this out into the world, other people are going to see it. And what if they don't think it's good enough? What if no one likes it? And that's perfectionism. So fear and doubt. I mean, fear is never a good thing to be led by. So if you're fearful of something, it's never a good place to make decisions on, to create from, to do things from. So, of course, fear and doubt are from our not being able to, um, not being enough to show up somewhere or go somewhere or do something or start our podcast or start our show or finish our book or whatever. Competition. This is a really good one because with competition, competition is where, you know, we are afraid that um, we're not, we if we're going to compete with someone else because we might not be good enough if we're competing with someone else um, or our stuff isn't good enough. 
And this idea of competition is is a really interesting thing. Um, I got bumped right up against it and really changed my whole dynamic around it when I had a hat making business years and years ago before there was Facebook. And we used to have to sit in a, a big Jacob Javits Center in New York City, set up our booth and buyers would come to buy our stuff. So first of all, you know, that's scary enough that you have to show up there and these stores walk by and most of them don't buy from you, right? And then we had the experience of um, our hats were so gorgeous. I say our, meaning my mom and my sister, it was our business. Um, our hats were so gorgeous that people would sit across from our booth and draw them. And even one time someone cut the label out of my hat and put theirs in it. Um, so I had to learn that, you know, competition is a very high form of a compliment, which isn't always easy to take that way when someone's copying from you. But the truth is that we are all super magical and we have a magic elixir, which is our experiences in life, our education, the people that we've learned from, the things we love and our special talents all blended around to pour out as our unique gifts into the world, right? So nobody ever has your magic elixir, which means that you are always many, many steps of someone that's copying from you because they don't know your direction. They don't know your next step or your next um, part to your recipe. So they never really can copy you completely. And so that's another thing where we think, um, you know, I've had a lot of people say, well, I don't want to. What if someone copies my card deck or copies this? And that is the way for us to keep our gift hidden when we have this fear of competition. This one. Okay. Saying yes when you mean no and saying no when you mean yes. That is definitely your not enoughness showing up because you don't want someone else to be pissed at you. You worry about what they'll feel, what they'll say, that you won't be enough, that you won't be good enough, whatever the thing is. So that is a good one to be aware of. And that's something you could change really immediately to check in and to be really in integrity when you are saying yes to something or no to something. A really good example is, of this is um, I was... Um, shopping in the grocery store. And I met this person that when we were um, in a situ, you know, relationship together, she, we, we didn't really hit it off or we didn't really have much in common. So just like out of, I guess, oh, there you are. And the first thing you say, oh, let's get together sometime. So at that moment, I could have said, yeah, let's do it. And I'd be lying, right? Because I had no intention of doing that. And so how many times do you say, oh, yeah, let's get together. Oh, yeah, let's. And you don't really mean it. So that's when you are kind of that kind of you're out of integrity and you're kind of lying, which is a big word. But you're lying to the other person and to yourself, which hurts your soul when you do that. So when it's a yes, it's a yes. And when it's a no, it's a no, no matter what anyone will think or feel. It's not your business to be in someone else's business. Weak and no boundaries. This is really valuable and important. And you can also start to work on this right now. Because um, <clears throat> when you have weak boundaries in business, there's nobody winning because people can push you around. Nobody knows what's happening. Nobody's clear. There's no clarity on anything. So um, when I first decided that I was going to have stronger boundaries in my business and show up in integrity, what that means is that I start my meetings on time. I end my meetings on time. I have certain, um, you know, things that are my standards and everyone knows what they are. So you know, when you come to my room for a class, you know, I'm going to start on time, you know, I'm going to end on time. So you don't have to worry that if you have to go at that hour mark that you're going to miss things. Right. So it's really honoring everybody um, and myself when I'm 
staying to my boundaries. And then there's no confusion. People know what to expect. And if it's not what they, if they don't like what I'm offering, then they can move on without guessing that maybe, um, you know, it's something's going to be different than it is. This proving, right, when we're over delivering or giving away extra things or not, well, maybe I'm not going to charge this much or something. We're trying to prove our worth. We're trying to over deliver so people feel like they got value from us because we're not secure enough in the value that we provide. So another thing to look out for is, you know, where are you trying to prove things? You don't have to prove anything. You just need to show up as yourself, right? So your homework, your assignment, if you choose to accept it, is to consider the ways that you notice a not enoughness is showing up in your life. Because as you saw, they're super sneaky. And they sneak in in ways that don't show up as like the not enough sign that we're wearing. But they show up in the ways that block us from being our true selves, from being um, all that we can be. And one of the things is that when you, when I am a, show up as my best self, that is when I invite others just by my actions to do the same. That's when you, just by your actions, invite others to do the same. So Shika, my co-host in our um, On Becoming Enough show, and myself created a Facebook campaign. So please message me if you would love to be part of it. But in this um, You Are Enough campaign, we are inviting you to show up and gift away something, which means a kind word, a beautiful poem, a beautiful image, something inspirational to other people to help them feel enough. So it has nothing to do with you trying to switch how you are. It has to do with you giving your gift to someone else to rise them up because we all rise together in this. We're all in this together. So some of these examples that I showed you, you'll start to notice, oh, wow, what am I doing? And it's this like beautiful awareness that you can have around the way that you're showing up and why you do things that will help you, you know, that, that awareness is the key. I'm giving you the key, <laughs> the key to start to become all that you are here to become. So thanks for joining me today. I hope that I provided valuable information to you on this topic of enough. And we will see you. The show airs every Wednesday at 9 a.m. And we'd love to have you come on and join us. And we will see you next week. Ciao for now. That was good.